The Discovery of Oz the Terrible The four travelers walked up to the great gate of Emerald City and rang the bell. It was opened by the same guardian of the gates they had met before. He led them into his little room and locked spectacles on their eyes, just as he had done before. Afterward, they passed on through the Emerald City when the people heard from the guardian of the gates that Dorothy had melted the Wicked Witch of the West. They followed them in a great crowd to the Palace of Oz. The soldier with the green whiskers was still on guard before the door. He had the news carried straight to Oz, but Oz made no reply for several days. At last the wizard sent word for them to come to the throne room. Each of them expected to see the wizard in the shape he had taken before, and all were greatly surprised when they saw no one at all in the room. Presently they heard a voice that seemed to be coming from somewhere near the top of the great dome, and it said, I am Oz, the great and terrible. Why do you seek me? We have come to claim our promise, O oh Oz, said Dorothy. Is the wicked witch really destroyed? asked the voice, and Dorothy thought it trembled a little. Yes, she answered. I melted her with a bucket of water. Dear me, said the voice, how sudden! Well, come to me tomorrow, for I must have time to think it over. The lion thought it might be as well to frighten the wizard, so he gave a large, loud roar, which was so fierce and dreadful that Toto jumped away from him in alarm and tipped over the screen that stood in the corner. As it fell with a crash, they looked that way and they saw a little old man with a bald head who seemed to be as much surprised as they were. The tin woodman, raising his axe, rushed toward the little man and cried out, Who are you? I am Oz, the great and terrible, said the little man in a trembling voice. But don't, don't strike me, please don't, and I'll do anything you want me to. The friends looked at him in surprise and dismay. We thought, Oz was a great head, said Dorothy. No, you are wrong, said the little man meekly. I have been making believe. Making believe, cried Dorothy. Are you not a great wizard? Hush, my dear, he said. Don't speak so loud, or you will be overheard, and I should be ruined. I am supposed to be a great wizard. And aren't you, she asked. Not a bit of it, my dear. I'm just a common man. You're more than that, said the scarecrow in a grieved tone. You're a humbug. Exactly so, declared the little man, rubbing his hands together as if it pleased him. I am a humbug. But this is terrible, said the tin woodman. How shall I ever get my heart? Or my courage, asked the lion. Or my brains, wailed the scarecrow. My dear friend, said Oz, I pray you, think of me and the terrible trouble I'm in at being found out. "'Doesn't anyone else know you're a humbug?' asked Dorothy. "'No one knows it but you four and myself,' replied Oz. "'It was a great mistake my ever letting you into the throne room. "'Usually I will not see even my subjects, and so they believe I am something terrible.' "'But I don't understand,' said Dorothy, in bewilderment. "'How was it that you appeared to us as a great head?' "'Oh, that was one of my tricks,' answered Oz. "'Step this way, please, and I will tell you all about it.' He led them to a small chamber in the rear of the throne room and pointed to the corner, in which lay the great head made out of many thicknesses of paper and with a carefully painted face. This I hung from the ceiling by a wire, said Oz. I stood behind the screen and pulled a thread to make the eyes and mouth move. But how about the voice, she inquired. Oh, I am a ventriloquist, said the little man. I can throw the sound of my voice wherever I wish, so that you thought it was coming out of the head. Really, said the scarecrow, you ought to be ashamed of yourself for being such a humbug. I am, I certainly am, answered the little man sorrowfully, but it was the only thing I could do. Sit down, please, and I will tell you my story. I was born in Omaha. Why, that isn't very far from Kansas, cried Dorothy. No, but it's farther from here, he said sadly. When I grew up, I became a ventriloquist, trained by a great master. After a time, I tired of that. 
and became a man who goes up in a balloon on circus day so as to draw a crowd of people. Well, one day I went up to the balloon and the ropes got twisted so that I couldn't come down again. It went way above the clouds. For a day and a night I traveled through the air, and on the morning of the second day I awoke and found the balloon floating over a strange and beautiful country. It came down gradually, and I found myself in the midst of strange people who, seeing me come from the clouds, thought I was a great wizard. Of course I let them think so, because they were afraid of me and promised to do anything I wished them to. Just to amuse myself and to keep the good people busy, I ordered them to build a city and my palace, and they did it all willingly. Then I thought, as the country was so green and beautiful, I would call the Emerald City. I would call it the Emerald City, and I put green spectacles on all the people so that everything they saw was green. But isn't everything here green, asked Dorothy? No more than in any other city, replied Oz. But when you wear green spectacles, everything you see looks green to you. My people have worn green glasses so long that most of them think it really is an emerald city. I have been good to the people, and they like me. But ever since this palace was built, I have shut myself up and would not see any of them. While I had no magical powers at all, I soon found out that the witches were really able to do wonderful things. Fortunately, the witch of the north and south were good, but the witches of the east and west were terribly wicked, and had they not thought I was more powerful than, than they themselves, they would surely have destroyed me. So you can imagine how pleased I was when I heard your house had fallen on the wicked witch of the east. When you came to me, I was willing to promise anything if you could only do away with the other wicked witch, but now you have melted her. I am ashamed to say that I cannot keep my promises. I think you're a very bad man, said Dorothy. Oh, no, my dear, I'm really a very good man, but I'm a very bad wizard, I must admit. Can't you give me brains? asked the scarecrow. You don't need them. You are learning something every day. A baby has brains, but it doesn't know much. Experience is the only thing that brings knowledge, and the longer you are on earth, the more experience you are sure to get. That may all be true, said the scarecrow, but I shall be very unhappy unless you give me brains. Well, the false wizard said with a sigh, if you will come to me tomorrow morning, I will stuff your head with some brains. I cannot tell you how to use them, however. You must find that for yourself. Oh, thank you, thank you, cried the scarecrow. I'll find a way to use them, never fear. But how about my courage, asked the lion anxiously. You have plenty of courage, I am sure, answered Oz. All you need is confidence in yourself. True courage is in facing danger when you are afraid, and that kind of courage you have in plenty. Perhaps I have, but I'm scared just the same, said the lion. I shall be very unhappy unless you give me that sort of courage that makes one forgets he is afraid. Very well, I will give you that sort of courage tomorrow, replied Oz. How about my heart, asked the woodman. Why, as for that, answered Oz, I think you are wrong to want a heart. It makes most people unhappy. You are in luck not to have a heart. I will bear all the unhappiness without a murmur if you will give me the heart said the Tin Woodman. Very well, answered Oz meekly. Come to me tomorrow and you shall have a heart. And now, said Dorothy, how am I to get back to Kansas? We shall have to think about that, replied the little man. Give me two or three days to consider the matter, and I'll try to find a way to carry you over the desert. There is only one thing I ask in return for my help. Such as it is, you must keep my secret and tell no one I am a humbug. They agreed and went back to their rooms in high spirits. Even Dorothy had hope that the great and terrible humbug, as she called him, would find a way to send her back to Kansas.